Let's say you are designing a smart greenhouse system to keep plants healthy. You need a sensor that can measure both temperature and humidity, so you know when to turn on a fan, a water mister, or a heater. For a simple classroom demo, you might use the DHT11 sensor, which gives basic readings. But if you want more reliable and accurate measurements, especially in extreme conditions, the DHT22 is the better choice. In this experiment, we will connect a DHT22 sensor to an ESP32 board and use an LED and buzzer to give alerts when temperature or humidity crosses certain limits. This scenario shows how these sensors can form the foundation of real-world applications like weather stations, home automation, and smart agriculture. The DHT22 is a digital temperature and humidity sensor that is widely used in electronics and IoT projects because of its accuracy, range, and low cost. It can measure temperature from negative 40 up to positive 80 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of about plus or minus degree Celsius. And it can measure humidity across a full range of 0 to 100 percent with a typical accuracy of plus or minus 2 to percent relative humidity. The sensor communicates with microcontrollers such as the ESP32 or Arduino using a single wire digital protocol, making it simple to interface without the need for additional complex circuitry. One important feature of the DHT22 is its internal calibrated digital signal output, which means the sensor handles the analog to digital conversion internally, providing reliable and ready to use data. Although it updates its readings approximately once every two seconds, slower than some other sensors, it is still highly suitable for applications where rapid changes are not critical. Because of its wider range and higher accuracy compared to the cheaper DHT11, the DHT22 is often used in weather stations, smart agriculture systems, indoor climate monitoring, and home automation projects. Its combination of affordability, precision, and ease of use makes it a preferred choice for hobbyists, students, and professionals alike. Let's begin by opening the WOCWI simulator in our browser and starting a new ESP32 project. From the left panel, drag in the components we need, a breadboard, a DHT22 sensor, an LED with a 220 ohm resistor, and a buzzer. We will replace the red LED with a blue one, update the resistor value to 220 ohms, and assign a blue color to the jumper wire for consistency. With the resistor placed on the anode side of the LED, we will connect it to GPIO32 of the ESP32, while the cathode of the LED will be connected to ground, then assign a blue color to the jumper wire as mentioned. Next, connect the DHT22 sensor's VCC pin to the positive rail of the breadboard, then link that rail to the 5 volts pin of the ESP32. Connect the GND pin of the sensor to the ground rail of the breadboard, which is tied to the ESP32's ground. Always use black jumper wires for ground or negative connections, and red jumper wires for positive or VCC connections. And, Finally, connect the data pin of the DHT22 to GPIO25 on the ESP32 and assign yellow for the jumper wire. For the buzzer, connect its positive pin to GPIO27 on the ESP32 and its negative pin to ground and assign the jumper wire color to pink. Once the wiring is complete, switch to the code editor in WOCWI and paste the program that initializes the DHT22, reads the temperature and humidity, and controls the LED and buzzer based on those values. When everything is ready, click the green run simulation button. The ESP32 will start executing the uploaded code, the serial monitor will display the live temperature and humidity values, 
and you can test the system by adjusting the DHT22 values in the simulator to trigger the LED and buzzer alerts. This block includes the required Arduino core library and the DHT sensor library. It also defines which pins of the ESP32 are connected to the LED, the buzzer, and the DHT22 sensor. This makes the code easier to read and change later. Here, we set the alert thresholds. If the temperature goes above 30 degrees Celsius or the humidity goes above 70%, the alarm will trigger. This creates a DHT object from the DHT ESP class, which will handle communication with the DHT22 sensor. This block runs once at startup. Serial.begin, 115200, initializes the serial monitor for debugging. Pin mode sets the LED and buzzer pins as outputs. DHT.setup initializes the DHT22 sensor so the ESP32 can read temperature and humidity values. Every time the loop runs, the ESP32 reads temperature and humidity from the DHT22 sensor and stores them in variables T and H. This checks if the sensor failed to return valid numbers, nayn is equal to not a number. If it fails, it prints an error message and skips the rest of the loop. This block prints the latest temperature and humidity values to the serial monitor so you can watch them live in Wokwi or on a real ESP32. This is the decision-making block. If temperature more than 30 degrees Celsius or humidity is more than 70%, both the LED and buzzer are turned on. Otherwise, both are turned off. Finally, the ESP32 waits for two seconds before taking the next reading. This avoids spamming the serial monitor and gives the DHT22 sensor enough time between readings. As we come to the end of this experiment, we have successfully learned how to connect and program the DHT22 sensor with the ESP32 and how to use an LED and buzzer as alerts whenever temperature or humidity goes beyond the set threshold. This exercise is a simple but powerful example of how microcontrollers can be used to monitor the environment and provide instant feedback, which is the foundation of many IoT and smart system applications. With what you've learned here, you can now expand the project further, such as adding displays, sending data to the cloud, or controlling other devices. I hope this tutorial has been helpful in building your confidence with the ESP32 and sensors, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you won't miss the next exciting project. Until then, keep experimenting, keep learning, and see you in the next video.